So let's suppose that we begin with a certain sample of carbon-11 isotopes. So let's say our initial sample is 5 milligrams. Now we know that the half-life of carbon-11 is about 20.33 minutes. Using these values we want to calculate parts A, B and C and let's begin with part A. So calculate the number of carbon-11 atoms that are present initially, let's say at a time of zero minutes. So basically to calculate this number we have to use our initial sample given in grams. So we take this and we convert it into grams by dividing it by 1000. So we have 0.005 grams and we divide that by the atomic mass of carbon 11, namely 11 grams per mole. The grams cancel and we're left with moles. Now we know that in one mole there is an Avogadro's number of atoms that is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms in one mole. So we multiply Avogadro's number by the number of moles of our sample that we begin with initially and that gives us the total number of atoms that we have in our initial sample that is 2.74 times 10 to the 20 atoms. Now let's move on to part B. We want to find the maximum activity, the maximum rate of decay of the carbon-11 sample. Now at what time can we calculate the maximum activity? So if we look at the following curve, this curve basically describes the change in our activity given by R. So the y-axis is the activity given by R and this is the curve given by this equation. And the x-axis is the time, let's say, given in minutes. So based on this curve we see that the highest activity is given at a time of zero minutes. So before we actually use this equation and plug in zero for the time, we have to calculate what our decay constant alpha is. Now the relationship between alpha, our decay constant, and the half-life is given by this equation. So we see that alpha is equal to natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. The half-life is this. So we divide the 2 and we get 0 0.0341 minutes to the negative 1. So that means this is our alpha value. And now that we know what the alpha value is, we can basically calculate what the maximum activity is. So we take this equation and we set our time equal to zero because that corresponds to maximum activity and that's what we want to find. So the maximum activity R is equal to the product of alpha, the decay constant N, which was calculated in part A to be this value, multiplied by e to the zero, which is simply one. So we plug in our values and we see that the rate of decay, the maximum maximum rate of decay at a time of zero is given by this value, 9.34 times 10 to the 18 atoms per minute. So this is the activity of our isotope of our carbon-11 at a time of zero. Now finally, let's move on to part C. Calculate the activity after 90 minutes. So basically, we have to use this equation. Now that we know what our alpha is, we simply plug in a time of 90 minutes for this T. So we use this equation. So 9.34 times 10 to the 18 atoms per minute is simply our maximum activity which is given by alpha times n and we multiply that by e to the negative alpha multiplied by 90 minutes and we get about 4.34 times 10 to the 17 atoms per minute. So we basically see from this curve that as the time progresses our activity decreases and that's exactly why these two values are different. So as time progresses the activity decreases as seen by this number. This is smaller than our initial activity of our isotope.